Hello, I am Jose Soler and I will introduce a miscellany of uh, theoretical concepts and more practical issues on the Siesta code. Siesta was designed to be a standard DFT code specialized in uh, fast calculations for large systems, but also allowing highly accurate calculations. It uses norm-conserving pseudopotentials, a basis of numerical atomic orbitals, a uniform space grid uh, for some integrals, and uh, an order and functional for solving Schrodinger's equation. Let us start with the very basics that probably most of you know, already know, but that I will introduce for completeness. First principles methods uh, intend to uh, predict the properties of molecules and materials, starting from just uh, Schrodinger's equation to describe the evolution of the system, and uh, Coulomb's law to describe the interaction between the particles. The first basic approximation is born oppenheimers Although all the particles in the system move simultaneously, influencing each other, uh, the nuclei are much heavier than the electrons. This means first that their wave packets are very narrow and can be approximated by a point charge, and second, generally the nuclei move much more slowly than the electrons, giving the later time to adapt to their movement and uh, stay in their ground state. So what we can do is, at each particular time, consider the nuclei at fixed Mm, positions, and then solve Schrodinger's equation for the electrons. From the uh, charge distribution of the electrons, we can find the electrostatic forces on the nuclei and find their movement uh, most frequently by uh, classical Newton dynamics. This decouples the motion of electrons and nuclei and greatly simplifies the problem. The next basic step is density functional theory. Even if we consider the nuclei as classical point charges at fixed positions, uh, the interaction between the different electrons is a correlated motion, uh, which implies that uh, we have to deal with subway function, which is um, a function of all the electron positions uh, together. And this makes the problem very difficult to solve. What, what DFT does is to replace this n electron problem by an effective one electron problem in which each electron moves independently in the mean field or in, in an effective potential created by the nuclei. The potential created by the electron charge, um, the electrostatic potential, and an extra term which is called the exchange and correlation potential, which accounts for the complicated correlation effects. What this allows is to decouple the motions of the different particles and to replace the n electron problem by a one electron problem, which in turn allows to write the uh, n electron wave function by a product of one electron wave functions. Still, the exchange and correlation potential that one electron in, at point R feels is a function of the density of at all other points. So it is a function of an infinite number of variables. In practice, uh, one substitutes this complicated function by a much simpler approximation. The simplest of, uh, of one is the local density approximation. In this, <coughs> we uh, make the exchange and correlation potential depend on the density at only the point at which the electron is. To calculate this potential, what we do is to assume that we have a system uh, of constant density equal to the density at that point, but constant, and then we calculate the so-called exchange and correlation hole that the electron forms 
by depleting the uh, probability of finding other electrons nearby uh, using quantum Monte Carlo methods which are very accurate. This exchange and correlation whole has two parts. The first one is due to the Pauli exclusion principle which uh, implies that uh, where one electron is there can be no other electrons uh, and which in, in reality implies that they cannot be either nearby. And uh, this part is called the exchange. And another part which um, is due to the repulsion, to the electrostatic repulsion between the electrons, which is called correlation properly. Uh, in the um, general gradient approximation, uh, the potential depends not only of the density at that point, but also of the gradient of the density at that point. So it is a two-variable function. In the non-local van der Waals exchange and correlation functionals, uh, the potential depends on the density at two points simultaneously and their gradients. The normal implementation of density functional theory is the Konshan method. You start with an approximate density, usually a sum of atomic densities, and you calculate an effective potential uh, made by the electrostatic potential produced by the nuclei and the electron density, and you add the exchange and correlation potential. You then solve Schrodinger's equation by expanding the wave functions in a basis set, what reduces the differential Schrodinger equation to a matrix eigenvalue problem. Finally, you find a new density as the sum of the occupied electron wave functions, and you repeat this self-consistency cycle until the density no longer changes. It is easy to see that the Konshan method uh, scales computationally as the cube of the number of electrons. And this is essentially due to the Pauli exclusion principle that requires that the occupied states are mutually orthogonal. Thus, simply to check that they are in fact orthogonal, you have to perform an integral over all space whose volume is proportional to the size of the system, so to the number of electrons. And you have to do this for, for each pair of occupied states, psi i and psi j. So this gives the three factors n uh, that make uh, the cost uh, scale as n cube. However, Mm, although the uh, block states or the molecular orbitals of, uh, of the system, that is the solution of Schrodinger's equation, are extended over all space, one can perform a unitary transformation of them uh, to make them as localized as possible. And these are called the Vanier functions. That means that uh, their overlap will be mm, substantial or non-negligible over uh, mm, with respect to a finite set of other Vanier functions um, around each other. And furthermore, the integral to compute their overlap will have to be performed only over uh, a small region of uh, space, which um, does not scale as the system size. And that means that uh, all the problem of, of orthogonalizing the Vanier functions will scale as n instead of n cube. And this is basically taking advantage of the principle of localization. To expand these uh, localized Vanier wave functions, or in general any electron wave functions, localized or not, Siesta uses a linear combination 
of basis orbitals which are also strictly localized within, within some uh, radius that uh, will be different for each basis orbital. I will not say anything more about uh, basis orbitals because there will be uh, another talk about them except for a couple of details. First, that uh, the basis orbitals are the product of a radial function times um, real spherical harmonics. Um, then the uh, m quantum number is no longer the true angular momentum, but it is just an index going f also from minus L to plus L, but uh, which um, gives some order of the uh, spherical harmonics, which is somewhat non-standard. And the second detail I want to mention is that Siesta always writes um, a file called the name of the system dot orb index with all kinds of details about the basis orbitals, like uh, the atom to which it belongs, the mm, species uh, of that atom, um, the index of the orbital within its atom, uh, its quantum numbers, its um, symmetry and um, other details. In this figure and table, we compare the performance of the siesta atomic orbitals with that of a plane wave basis. The curve shows the convergence of the total energy of uh, bulk silicon as a function of the uh, plane wave cutoff using a plane wave basis. The arrows show the um, energy of uh, siesta using different basis sets. So you can see that a single zeta basis with just four orbitals per atom is equivalent in uh, energy convergence to a um, uh, plane wave basis set with about uh, 50 or more orbitals. And a standard double zeta plus polarization basis set of siesta is equivalent in terms of energy convergence to a plane wave basis of more than 200 orbitals. As I mentioned before, the differential Schrodinger equation can be reduced by a normal algebraic uh, equation involving two matrices and a set of expansion coefficients of the wave functions in terms of a set of basis orbitals phi. The two functions involved are the um, matrix elements between the basis orbitals of the Hamiltonian operator and the overlap between the basis orbitals. In the pseudopotential approximation used by Siesta, the total Hamiltonian is composed by the Laplacian operator T, the pseudopotential, which describes the interaction with the nuclei and the core electrons, the Hartree electrostatic potential produced by the valence electrons only, and the exchange and correlation potential that depends on the valence uh, electron density also. The um, pseudopotential operator is in turn composed by two terms. Um, um, local uh, pseudopotential uh, that uh, goes as the valence um, charge of the atom over R uh, at long distances, but which is, mm, it has some different shape at short distances, and a non-local uh, Kleinman by Lander operator, which is um, a sum of projections over uh, orbitals also centered on the atom, which are somewhat similar to the basis orbitals, but with a different radial shape. For computational convenience in siesta, 
uh, we handle the long range potentials produced by the uh, nuclei and its cores and the um, uh, electron valence density by introducing uh, a density which is, which is the sum of the atomic densities and uh, creating a new potential as the sum of uh, the um, local part of the pseudo potentials and this uh, potential created by the sum of atomic charges and this potential is called the neutral atom potential and uh, uh, the potential created by the difference between the true density and the sum of atom density. As a result, the total Hamiltonian is the sum of these uh, five terms. Two of them can be um, handled by two center integrals, and the uh, remaining three terms are uh, performed as an integral in a uniform grid of points uh, in real space. The two center integrals are performed very efficiently using the convolution theorem. Thus, the overlap between two orbitals phi1 and phi2, uh, separated by a distance r, can be uh, described as the convolution be between the two functions phi1 and phi2. Uh, and the convolution theorem um, says that a convolution in real space uh, is the same as a normal product in reciprocal space. So all we have to do is to Fourier transform the basis orbitals to reciprocal space, multiply them, and then Fourier transform back the product to real space. And this will give us the overlap uh, at all distances uh, r. This is done uh, once uh, for all in um, store as a function of r. The terms of the Hamiltonian that depend on potentials, uh, electrostatic or exchange and correlation potentials, are performed in um, a grid of mesh points in real space. We start by calculating the so-called density matrix from the expansion coefficients of the occupied electron wave functions in terms of the basis orbitals. Then we can find the density at every grid point uh, as a product of uh, pairs of basis orbitals times the density matrix elements. Once we have the density at every grid point, we can calculate the exchange and correlation potential and also the electrostatic potential uh, produced by uh, delta rho, the difference between the density and the uh, sum of atoms, uh, using fast Fourier transform methods. 